Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com and the conclusion of our study titled, The Millennial Kingdom is a Jewish Kingdom. This is part two of two. Real quick, a reminder of what happens with the return of Christ. Israel is attacked by the Antichrist. Just think this through. He's a t we read about it in Revelation 12. He's a t Israel's attacked by the Antichrist, but all Israel that remains at that time is saved. And then there's the judgment of the nations. We don't have time to read it all, but it's in Matthew 25, 31 to 46. And it's about Israel. Amen. Jesus says, you did these unto m me when he did it unto my brethren. And he's talking about his brethren. He's talking about his blood brethren, the Jews. Uh, a lot of times we, we take these passages and say, if you've done it to the least of these, my brethren, and we talk about Christians. And the text isn't about that. Amen. The text itself is talking about Jesus as a Jew in Israel looking at Jews and saying, my brethren. He's pointing right at them. Right. I mean, you know, you want to you apply it spiritually and say, you know, you should be good to your brethren. Fine. Cause, but there's plenty of other scriptures that teach that. <laughs> But these texts that I'm talking about is Jesus talking about the Jews. Jesus sits on a throne in Jerusalem. Amen. This is what happens at His return. You'll be with Him. I'll be with Him when this happens. Jesus rules from Israel. Now, let's look at another millennium text where the King of Israel rules the world. We just want to look at one more. It's in Isaiah chapter 60. Go ahead and turn there. We'll look at a few verses. Close this thing up. And folks, this is only a couple of passages we're covering tonight. There's a lot more. As you read through the Bible, my hope and prayer is that you'll recognize these as you read through your Bible. Amen. Isaiah chapter 60, beginning in verse 1. This is a praise song from I think the late 80's. Uh, based on this, you might remember. Arise, shine, for the light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. How many of you remember that song I'm talking about? A couple of you. <laughs> yeah, I used to play it to you, so I hope you remember. Read verse 2. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and the gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and His glory shall be seen upon thee. Now look at that. I just want you to show it. A lot of people are seeing that, and they're just like, Oh yeah, the Lord is good. That's not the context. The context is that the, Lord, the, the glory of the Lord has risen upon me and He's talking about at the end of the tribulation period. After the darkness of the tribulation period. This is the return of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> when you start noticing the context of the Bible, you, you see so often that when we've been reading things and sometimes we sang it earlier. This is the day that the Lord has made. In the context, that's about the millennium. It's awesome. Read verse 3. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. We cover that. The whole world at the Feast of Tabernacles is going to come to Jerusalem. Why? Because it's a king of Israel that rules the world. And that's why they go back to Israel. Why? Because Jesus rules. Amen. 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 Verse 4. Read it. Lift up thine eyes round about and see... All they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy son shall come from far, and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Verse 5. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. That's picturing this world government under King Jesus. All the Gentiles come to Israel to see who? Jesus. King Jesus. I love saying that. <laughs> Say it with me. King Jesus. Oh, does that sound good? Read verse 6. The multitude of camels shall cover thee. The dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, all they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. You know, when those magi, when those wise men brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh, it was because they were bringing it to the king. Amen. 
and he was despised and rejected. He came into his own, but his own received him not. So Israel rejected her king for a time, but the day is coming when that little baby that received those gifts is going to be grown up Jesus, glorified, sitting on a throne, and they're going to come from all over the world and bring the same gifts they brought to the baby. <laughs> oh. Merry Christmas! <laughs> Verse 7, read it with me. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Nebaioth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance on mine altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. That last phrase, I mean, that's just incredible. It's, uh, if you know what he's talking about there, it's going to be quite a scene. I will glorify the house of my glory. The house is the temple. And we saw that in a previous study. He's going to be sitting on a throne in the Holy of Holies. As it's called, the most holy place, the King James Bible calls it. And he's going to be sitting there and there's going to be glory coming out of that temple. That place is going to glow <laughs> as you're approaching it. It's going to be awesome. And this is just a bonus. This is, all right, everybody, I want everybody, this is a bonus. This is about you. You may have read it before and not noticed this. Check out this little nugget slipped in here as the prophet Isaiah tells us about the coming kingdom. Watch this. Read it. Who are these that fly as a cloud and as the doves to their window? That's awesome. That's you. Now I know it's, it's weird and hard to believe. <laughs> Unless you're just a Bible believer who just believes what he reads. Amen. He's just talking about what he's seeing and he's like, stops and asks a question. He says, who are these that fly as a cloud and as the doves to their windows? Okay, and then he gets back to it. <laughs> Next time you read that passage, read it, and when you come to that picture, you know, you're sitting there prophesying about what you're seeing and all of a sudden you just stop and say, who are these people flying around here? <laughs> but they're not like, you know... They're, they're, they're graceful like doves, and they fly right up to their windows. <laughs> now listen, listen, people mock. They love to mock this. That's the thing called the rapture. What does the rapture mean? You're going to fly. The rapture means you're going to fly. You know when Jesus ascended to heaven, I picture Him raising his hands and going up. doesn't say what he did, but I just picture it that way. Like Superman. No, 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 no. That's not, I mean, it is funny, but that's not on accident. Where did the word Superman originate from? Do you know? Nietzsche. You know who Nietzsche is? He also wrote a book called Antichrist. He was the German unbeliever that whose philosophical books destroyed millions and the Superman in the comic books was a child's play version of Nietzsche's Superman and the things in that comic book represent things in the philosophical view of the Superman of Nietzsche and Nietzsche's Superman was Antichrist Superman originally was a perversion, a twist, a counterfeit of Jesus Christ. And it gets all cute and everything in the movies and you know you can watch it and you don't think about that but that's the original thing behind it and then when you watch those movies listen, discern how often they contradict God's Word. Seriously. Just do that next time. Turn on Superman and don't want to like it and love everything about it. Be Acts 17 11 with Superman. Ask how often they say and do things that is like anti-Christ, against Christ, against the Word of God. They teach evolution. What did we talk about Sunday? That's a blasphemous denial of Jesus Christ. He's the Creator. When you deny creation, you deny the Creator. It's blasphemy. See what I'm saying? 
discernment. And if we can fly at the rapture, why are not we going to fly during the millennium? Amen. Anyone want to answer that? But sincerely, the same people who reject and mock our rapture and us flying in the millennium, they believe this. Right. <laughs> Intergalactic travel. Yep. Just look it up sometime and see how impossible that is. How long, first of all, you can't travel at the speed of light. Mm -hmm. But if you could, how long would it take you to get to the nearest star? Four years. Four years, yeah. Four more. That's at the speed of light. Mm -hmm. To get to the nearest galaxy, it's into the tens of thousands of years. I can't remember the exact number. It's two point, I know the Andromeda is 2.5 million, I think. Okay, now let's <laughs> think about it. You can't do that. You can't travel the speed of light, but even if you did, you need a thousand lifetimes at the speed of light, which you can't do. And yet there are people all over the world, when you go out on the street, you talk about Jesus Christ and the rapture, they'll laugh at you, but then you talk about aliens coming to the earth, they believe it. They do. One is based on the Word of God. The other is based on fiction. They believe fiction. They believe in wormholes. Stephen Hawking is supposed to be one of the most intelligent men on the planet. I've read a couple of his books. And I'm sitting there just the whole time just going, how can, I, how can a man who's supposed to be smart be saying this stuff? It's... I'm not making fun, so I'm, I'm just going to talk like a professor. But this is Stephen Hawking's in his brain. Well, you see, nothing is something. Nothing exploded and became everything that we see today. Brilliant. Brilliant. This is what, I'm telling you, millions of people who vote, by the way, believe that this exists out there somewhere. And it would, if we would just start funding NASA again, one of these days we'll get there. Again, in the face of science. It's just amazing. But they'll mock and make fun of you and me. I, they're delusional. They seek a millennial kingdom without a righteous king. Did you get that? That's what it's all about. Star Wars, George Lucas. Star Trek, what's his name? Roddenberry. All these, you talk about the, the people who write the comic books and the people who write all this stuff. You go look it up. They've rejected Jesus Christ and they're creating this delusion of a kingdom without King Jesus. And it's just like the United Nations. The United Nations wants you to believe in a world where there is peace without Jesus. That's what it's all about. It's delusional. I'll take the reality. Amen? Real quick, let's finish up. Verse 19, read that. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God they glory. That, I mean, it's going to just be brightness coming out of the temple, and then He is going to be the light. Literally. <laughs> Verse 20, Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself, for the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy morning shall be what? Ended. Ended. Thy people also shall be all righteous. That's not happened yet, has it? No. That's future. They shall inherit the land forever. It, they're in the land, but they haven't got it all. So that happened yet. Still future. And by the way, they've never had all that land you saw on that map. There are people who say they did back when Joshua was around. No, they didn't. They, God did His part, but they didn't do theirs. And they didn't run the Canaanites out of the land. And they didn't possess all the land. Just read Judges chapter 1. It clears that up. 
says, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. Read that. That I may be glorified. That's the point. That's the point of this whole thing. I have people ask me, them, why the millennium? Why doesn't God just, you know, rapture us and judge and then let's all get a harp and sit on a cloud and play? God's got a reason. God's got a plan. And first and foremost, it is that He will be glorified. Amen. It's all about Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, we thank You for this time in Your book. Wonderful to read about our future and to read about the future of Israel and to read about the future of King Jesus. And we just want to learn everything you have for us in your book about these things, knowing that there's so much that we will not know until we are in your presence. And Lord, we're so looking forward to being in your presence. And Father, we just ask that you speak to the hearts here in this room and those who are watching online and those who are watch or listen in the future to really allow these truths to sink in so that we can put aside this world and its cares and not be sidetracked, but to really live for reality and as Jesus said, to store up our treasures in heaven, to seek first the kingdom and His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto us. And to do all this for Your glory, to please You, and to glorify you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just want to mention real quick uh, a couple of the places that we're not going to cover tonight that you can read that are related to this is in Amos chapter 9, verses 9 through 15. I like to joke and say, yes, that is in the Bible. It's not apocrypha. <clears throat> I've talked to some Christians that don't even know that's in there. Zechariah chapter 14, verses 16 and 18. We didn't, I just didn't have time to get into that. Now we have a little, a few minutes for Q&A. If anybody wants to ask any questions. Yes, Stephen. Just a, a quick ombudsing. Uh, the uh, Nowhere in Star Wars do they ever say that there is intergalactic travel. Just, just so you know, they're, they're not that technologically savvy. The, the picture <laughs> actually at the end of Empire Strikes Back my Trekkie friends will kill them, I don't put this out. Thank you. The, the picture at the end of Empire Strikes Back is actually, uh, Luke is actually looking on the galaxy. He's, he's been pushed all the way to the outer rim. Um, it's supposed to be a, uh, a picture of him, uh, of, of the rebels uh, just being pushed out of the galaxy by, by the uh, galactic empire. So I just want to clear that up. <laughs> so your homework assignment is to go home and figure out how completely impossible it is for you to be standing on a ship outside of the galaxy looking back. Or even at the edge. Of the well, or the edge. They, they were at the extreme. It looked like they were pretty far they, off they looking at. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he's teaching a couple weeks. Maybe we'll learn something about that then. <laughs> what else was it? Are you looking at the donkeys? Oh, no. Any other questions? Yes, Tracy. Uh, we were talking about you know, Tim LaHaye, he died in one of us that left behind us here. They talked about he was the greatest. How many of you knew Tim LaHaye went to be the Lord? He had not okay. done it. No. But then he took a lot of the scriptures. Did he take the scriptures and just make fiction out of them? No, no I, I, I don't care about some of the things in his book. I've told everybody that. But he, he was, he was uh, most of the attacks on Tim LaHaye are from people like Mike Hoggard who don't know the Bible from a comic book. And because of that, then they attack him for things that if you listen to him, it's stuff we believe. Now, Tim LaHaye did do some, teach some things. Like he had the Pope raptured. I don't think that's going to happen. And um, he had, I believe, people who had rejected the gospel could still be saved. I don't believe that. So there are some things he got wrong, in my opinion, you know. But uh, on the basics, Tim LaHaye got things right. And what you're going to find on, on today, because of YouTube, uh, uh, made mainly right now it's YouTube, that anybody with a video camera is claiming to be a Bible teacher. Right. 
And you'd better be an Acts 1711 Bible student because I'm seeing people getting swept up by this stuff. Yeah, Bible institutes. Yeah, Bible institutes and things that. Um, I'm thinking about what I should say. <laughs> Some, there's a there's a guy on the radio. <laughs> no, not that. But there's a guy on the radio who uh, is an example of this. He doesn't have a church, and instead of just doing this little studio thing, he made he put an echo, so that he's talking into just a microphone in a studio in an office, but it's echoing like he's in a big auditorium. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Well, that's what I've seen it on YouTube too. I've shown Jenny videos. These guys and they're they're teaching and they're looking around like it's a house. But what they don't realize is every once in a while, when they change camera angles, you can see there's no one in the room. <laughs> that's deception, you know. It's just and and the problem is these guys don't have any ministry, but they want. It's a power thing. And so a lot of guys and they're getting on YouTube. The Steven Anderson guy that I've taken some of his stuff and shown what's wrong with it because he's attacking Israel, attacking the Jews, and uh, calling for the execution of homosexuals and all kinds of crazy he stuff. He does have a church, though. He does now. When he first started out, he had like six people and he acted like it was a big church. Well, then he, well, Alex Jones put him on his radio program and some others did, and he had some people actually moved to Arizona. And then so he has a, had a church about this size whenever he then hooked up with that professional documentarian, Paul Wittenberg, oh, yeah. and that then helped him triple in yeah, size. Now he's got a church plant, so he planted several, plant actually. Plant several, plant yeah. Plant. Yeah, Dre? Was it the execution of homosexuals under the law? Dre, you, had, you officially know more than Stephen Anderson. Right. I mean, <laughs> and if you were a circumcised Jew under the law, you had made a covenant with God, and if you were involved in sodomy, along with many other laws, you could be executed. But we're not Israel. We're not under that covenant. What do we do? We preach the gospel, and we call on uh, those in that lifestyle, just like the prostitutes, and the gamblers, and the blasphemers, and the thieves, and the liars. We call on all men to repent. We don't kill them. That's not our ministry. And then he, they also call on the government to do it. There is no righteous government Amen. that we want to trust to start executing people for sexual sin. And so anyway, it's, it's madness. But th th it's giving the devil something to throw at all of us Christians when some preacher out there does that. Yeah, Charlie? If Christ is ruling on earth, like so, I know in the millennium, the, the sun and the moon, and the, the second, like the 19th or 29th, that's talking about it. After the millennium, the eternal ages. Right? Yeah. And then, so at that time, Christ is the light. Right? Yes. But in the, because Christ is going to be on the earth during the millennium, it, our, our, our day and night still. Like, now, the, ex, the explanation is that it's going to be a very strange uh, light engulfing the world even during that time. But. Uh, Right. That, that's what I'm saying. Is it, it's it, it's eternal. It's the beginning of eternal day, and so, but there still will be a moon. Like we can see the moon in the sky now during the daytime, um, but you have the New Jerusalem, and and all that. So we'll, we'll get into that and try to explain it in with some detail because it's not easy to grasp. Uh, you know, it's like I said. There's things we can learn. We're going to have to experience it before we can really comprehend it. And that's one of the things is just the, 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 the atmosphere and the whole environment during the uh, thousand year reign. Yeah, Mariah? Question about Isaiah 64 4. No, I have seen in your ear, I've heard what. Uh, last part, the last part is what I want to focus on. A lot of people take that verse and they apply it personally, make it a personal application. Now, is that a proper way to handle the verse or is it that? Proper they, for the general mankind and what you have. They, basically, they do that because Paul quotes that verse and in Paul's use of it, he's telling people in a contemporary setting what Isaiah says. And for that reason, I know John R. Rice was one I'm used to teach that that wasn't 
just talking about the future, that's talking about even right now. And, you know, in a sense it's true that even in our lives now, we can't imagine what God's got in store for us. But the context that Paul quoted it from was Isaiah in the millennium. And should it so, be taken in a positive yes. application? Yes. Like, like there are good things planned in our future? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it's true for those who reject Jesus too. They can't imagine what they're <laughs> in, <laughs> heading for too. But. Like an eternal application though? Because I know a lot yeah. of people apply it and say, well, in this life I probably have riches and good health and everything like that in store for me. I you know, the emphasis is what's coming from the time you're in glorified state okay. throughout eternity. Because the way I hear it applied quite yeah. often is, well, we don't know what's in store, but keep holding out. God's going to bless me in some way with health, riches, house, car, etc. Et yeah, most of what's being preached and taught today is an earthly hope. And if you told them, no, you got to wait till you get in heaven for most of what you're worrying about and thinking about, that'd be depressing to a lot of people. Right. Yeah, Johnny? I was just... <clears throat> Just uh, back to the earlier comment on the sun and the moon. There, I agree. I think I, I think I read recently the verses where it said it's saying something like it, as long as the sun endures or something, mm. implying that it, oh, it yeah. will exist for quite a while. He said, before God destroys it." I think. Yeah, he says, "As long as the sun endures." It talks about also the moon. Yeah. Um, it, if if they be destroyed, then his promises to Israel could be destroyed. So what he's saying is, is they're not going to be destroyed until, you know, his promises are fulfilled to Israel. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's the context of that statement. James Bible preaching and teaching along with the encouragement of the psalms, hymns and spiritual songs. Tune in to our internet radio station available every day, 24 hours a day at bbfohioradio.com. Join listeners from over 150 nations, all 50 US states and other US territories who are tuning in and receiving free Bible teaching at bbfohioradio.com.